Okay, then I, we will go ahead and begin. We'll start with um, roll call. Board member Earl. Yes, I'm here. Board member Hansen. Here. Hello. Was that board member Cannon? Yes, good morning, I'm here. Good morning, board member uh, Scott Hansen. Yes, good morning, I'm here. Board member Thorpe. I'm here. Board member Gravit. Board member Gravit. Okay, we'll come back. I see your name, but I don't hear you. Okay, board member Belknap. Yes, and good morning, everyone. Okay, board member Lear. Uh, yes, hi. Good I'm morning. Here. Board member Davis. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Board member Newell. Present. Good morning. Board member Haynes. Yes, I'm here. Good morning, everyone. Board member Marsh. I'm here. Good morning, everybody. Board member Nielsen. Okay. Board member Chair Huntsman. Present and good morning. Good morning. Board member Bolter. I'm here. Good morning. Good morning. Board member Gravit. Is your microphone working? Okay, we are present. Um, board member Scott Nielsen is not present this morning with us. Sorry about that, I had to plug in my computer that was gonna die. Okay, <laughs> we, uh, we'll go ahead and read a statement. Uh, as authorized by Utah Code 52-4, this meeting is being held electronically without an anchor location to reduce the risk to health and safety from COVID-19 by limiting the frequency of in-person meetings. Hey, uh, the first item on our opening business is the board member message. And um, I have the great honor and privilege of giving that this morning. Um, so I just like to um, recognize that we have ahead of us a, a pretty full um, agenda and a lot of important matters to consider. So I'd like to begin this meeting with two very important questions. The first one is, why don't ants get sick? Well, because they have tiny antibodies. And the second question is, where does the general keep his armies? He keeps them in his sleeves, of course. <clears throat> The University of St. Augustine on their health sciences website talks about the benefits, uh, the health benefits, the mental health benefits of laughter. They give a list of, of things that laughter produces for us, provides distraction, it improves our mood, it reduces stress hormones, increases endorphins, and it strengthens relationships. Yeah. Regarding strengthening relationships, they state a shared laugh with friends, family, coworker, or others can help you feel more connected to that person and form a strong and lasting bond. Humor is also a powerful way to heal past disagreements and resentments. We have plenty of serious in our world right now. If we are not careful, our reaction to these weighty conversations um, can pull us apart as a community. As we approach a day of Thanksgiving this year, I hope we can find connection as we share shared gratitude with one another and hopefully that we can get together and share a laugh on occasion. I'm grateful for the chance that I have to um, be a part of education in Utah. I am appreciative of the examples of many of you, um, the time that we've been able to get to know one another. I am hopeful for that time when we can return to in-person meetings and be able to associate with each other more closely. I am grateful for the opportunity to meet students in our state and to be a part of their lives. They're wonderful, beautiful people and we're going through a very difficult time that is serious, but there's also a lot of smiles and happy people and things that are, are positive. And I hope we can grow and 
continue to work towards those happy and enjoyable things as we find common ground and things that we're all working towards in our community. I'd like to leave you with one last question. What did the Buffalo say to his son when he went to college? Bye son. That's it. Okay, moving on to our meeting. Okay, so next we have Michelle Watts and she is our HR, HR director and she's going to do employee introductions. Thank you, Michelle. Michelle? Are you able to hear me? You're, for me, your voice is really, really faint. Is that the same for others? Okay. Is that any better? Yes, thank you. Okay. Jeff, can you pull up the slideshow, please? Thank you. I am Michelle Watts. I am the HR Director for the Utah State Board of Education. And I will be introducing the new hires for September and October to the Utah State Board. Next slide. Lindsay Henderson, secondary math specialist from Spanish Fork and previously worked at Davis School District as a K through 12 math supervisor. Next. Bianca Demariva is an office specialist too in teaching and learning from Bulgaria and her previous work was at the Stein Erickson Lodge as an administrative assistant. Sarah Harward is a CARES administrative secretary from Hooper, Utah and previously worked at Mountain Crest High School as a seminary teacher. Jason Lizenby, preschool education specialist from Scipio, Utah, previously worked at the Davis School District in Head Start Data Compli and Compliance Manager. William Evans, performance coordinator from North Salt Lake, previously worked as an ed in Ed Direction School Improvement Coach. Isaac Pitcher, Research Consultant 2 from Park City, Utah, previous work at Creek Tea Barista. And I believe this is the last. Dimitri Dockel, Financial Compliance Auditor from Nepal, previous work at Merrick Bank as an internal auditor. I'd like to welcome all of these employees and hope to get to meet you soon and work with you in person. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle, and thank you to all of the employees that have joined us. Okay, next on the agenda is the Employee Recognition, Superintendent Sydney Dixon. Good morning, everybody. It's nice to be with you on this lovely fall day. I appreciate the humor from Vice Chair Cummins. That's always a nice way to start the day with a giggle. So thank you for that. Um, so our employee of the month, let's see, Jeff, I don't, do you want me to share my screen? Jeff, do you have the slide or do you want me to share my screen? I do not have the slide, so I will have you share the screen. Okay. Oops. Sorry for the background. Okay, hopefully you can see that and hear me. All right, um, so 
I am so excited to um, introduce you to Scott Eddy. Scott works in financial operations and, you know, it's so interesting. Normally, you know, that we would bring people into my office and um, make a big fuss and take a lot of pictures and have a lot of fun. And I thought, how will this translate into the virtual space? And we've really been able to have the same amount of fun in virtual space. So there, um, you, you might know if you've worked in Zoom a bit, that there is a view where you can all get into an auditorium. It looks like you're watching a movie. So you can all be together and kind of laugh and be joyful. So we were able to do that with Scott yesterday and celebrate him. He is a very fun person. He is being recognized um, because he is one of those who really can um, always improve ways for people to be together and to uh, make operations a little smoother. And he did so in this case by introducing financial ops to some of the features on Teams. And if you've been in our ops section, it's, it's a group that works very closely together. And if they have a question, they lean over a cubicle or they walk around the corner. And so it's been a little bit challenging um, when they're all in their own confines uh, trying to work together. And so by introducing uh, financial ops to teams and being able to access all of the features, they feel like it's really been able to help them uh, work together more effectively and efficiently. And Scott is a great employee and we're really happy to honor him. So congratulations. Now, Scott, I think is even in the office today. So he actually gets to use his employee of the month parking space. And um, we encourage him to use his eight hours of admin leave and he gets a certificate suitable for framing and a special um, water bottle that we've already put on his desk. So congratulations uh, to Scott Eddy. And a set of Ginzu knives, Sid. Does he get Ginzu knives too? <laughs> he, does, You know, we should add that board member, Lear. But thank you for that <laughs> suggestion. We're going to add that to our, our uh, satchel of things that we give them. Um, I also have the honor of, um, let's see if I can, Jeff, did you, do you have the other one or do you want me to share that as well? I do not have the other one either. Well, we have just really uh, failed to get you the right thing then. All right. Let's see. We had uh, another exciting event um, occur where we were able to, um, oh, can you see that? The assessment team. Okay, thank you. So we had another opportunity to honor members of our staff. The governor's um, the, each year, the governor provides some um, excellence awards, and in this case, our staff was able to um, be honored in a way that was very cross-collaborative, and we were very excited about this. So our assessment implementation team um, was honored for leadership, and uh, if you look at these faces, you know these wonderful people, Zach Christensen, Chuma Uso, Sydney Carter, uh, Darren Nelson, Jared Wright, Randy Raphael, and Kim Ratke. And um, these amazing people are those faces who were on the front lines when we had issues with assessment in the spring, um, not this past spring, but a year ago, and really trying to work through all of the issues of assessment and getting accountability together. What I love about this team is that if you think about it, it's, it's people from IT, from purchasing, from uh, st data and statistics, and we get to honor uh, Randy Raphael um, as a continuing part of his legacy. And it wasn't just about assessment, it was everybody leaning in together. So it was a great opportunity to um, honor our team this way. And normally they would have been in the rotunda with the governor and, and getting their picture taken, but it was a very nice virtual event and Darren actually got to give a speech, which he was thrilled about. So just really proud of, of this team and all of our employees. And thank you to the board for allowing us this time to honor them in this way. Thank you. Sorry about that. I got, sorry, it changed and it muted me. Sorry. Okay, so next is the education highlight. 
And Jeff Van Holten is going to introduce that for us today. Hello, everyone. I'm trying to make sure I get my video going. I did the, the faux pas of sitting with a window behind me, so you probably won't be able to see too much of me. I might look like I am in witness protection, so I apologize. Um, today, I wanted, I'm really excited to do the educational highlight. Um, we have 19 schools that are being honored for the great work that they are doing for um, English learners. And uh, those 19 schools come from uh, six different LEAs and they receive two different designations. We have 11 schools, and these are all elementary schools. I wanna be clear, this recognition that we give for schools who do uh, meet certain criteria that I'll outline for you, um, they are all elementary schools, the current group that we are doing this uh, recognition for. And I also wanna recognize uh, Christelle Estrada. She is with us today. So just please keep that in mind if you have any questions or thoughts afterward and you want to address those with Christelle, she's available. Um, she's been the one who gets to be on the front end of this as well and uh, gets the honor of working with these wonderful schools. Uh, so the, the criteria, if I can find it very quickly. Um, Bear with me one moment. So I, I can actually provide that if you want me to, if you can't find it. <clears throat> Please, Christelle, actually, that would be great. The, the criteria is the enrollment of 400 uh, or more students, um, 80 to 100 percent economically disadvantaged students, 40 or more uh, percent students learning English, and then um, 40 to 60% <clears throat> of those students actually achieving their individualized annual growth goal. And we have 11 schools of excellence who fit that criteria. And then uh, we added another criteria <clears throat> because of its significance in relationship to access to early college coursework um, is a percentage of students who have reached English proficiency before they, they have left elementary. Um, and it's 10% or more um, because the state average is uh, 6%. So 10% of the English learners in eight exemplary schools have actually reached English proficiency. And so their future for early college coursework um, and, uh, you know, equitable access to every kind of educational opportunity increases. So that's the criteria. Great. Thank you, Christelle. And I'm just going to quickly list off all of the schools, and then we have one in particular that is here to um, be highlighted today for you all. Um, so starting with the Canyon School District, Midvale School was um, a school that received the Excellence Award. And then in Granite School District for Excellence, we have Woodrow Wilson, Hillside School, Stansbury School, Granger School, David Gorley School, and James Madison School, or excuse me, James Madison is in Ogden. And then for Granite, they had one school that received exemplary, and that was Monroe. Uh, in the Ogden School District, James Madison and Thomas O. Smith Elementary Schools were um, received the excellence uh, designation. And then also in Ogden School District, Odyssey Elementary School received the exemplary. Uh, Provo School District had Spring Creek Elementary School receiving the exemplary. And then last but not least, Salt Lake School District, who had the most schools receiving any of the designations. Um, for excellence, we have Meadowlark and Mary W. Jackson Elementary School. And then for exemplary, we have Edison Elementary School, Liberty Elementary School, Escalante Elementary School, and Mountain View Elementary School. And last but not least, Backman Elementary School from Salt Lake School District. And uh, with us today is actually the principal, Heather Newell, of Backman Elementary School. And she's going to highlight some of the things that they've been doing in particular at Backman Elementary with their English learners. 
Uh, but first, I'm going to go to Peggy Patterson. She is the curriculum director for Salt Lake City School District. And again, this is our school district that had the most schools that received the designation this year. And she's going to highlight some of the work they're doing at a district level, and then we'll go straight over to Heather Newell, who can tell you all what they're doing with Backman Elementary. So take it away, Peggy. Thank you, Jeff. First, I need to correct. I'm, I am a literacy and the alternative language um, services director, I'm not the curriculum director, but um, we have a fabulous group curriculum director and I would not want to steal her thunder. So anyway, um, good morning and thank you, Superintendent Dixon, um, the board for the opportunity to be here to share some of the promising practices that are going on in our district. Um, I'd also like to really give a heartfelt thank you to Drs. Christelle Estrada and Rebecca Donaldson. Um, their, their leadership has been um, amazing and helping my district in particular, and I'm sure I speak for all other districts, in having a focus on our students that may have some barriers that prevent them from accessing um, the curriculum. So um, I just really, um, I've learned so much from both, and I thank you so much for your leadership, and also you're so easy to reach out to. So thanks so much. Um, today, I'd like to highlight just a couple of the things at the district level that we do to support schools in their work. But I'd first like to acknowledge that the work is really done at the classroom level um, with a knowledgeable and well-supported teacher. So I see that that is my role is to prov provide that infrastructure and that support that makes the work that really matters happen. Um, the administrators, the teachers, paraprofessionals, all of the students that are supporting our English language learners have really made this possible for our district. So today I'd like to highlight two areas that we've really focused on in the past um, three years. Um, number one would be we've done a really concerted focused effort on integrating our instruction across the school day for English language learners. Um, one way that we started to do that was in our elementary schools. We were doing a pullout program with a, a, a good program, but what was happening is the cohesion, I believed, was missing. So we adopted the Wonders ELD, which is complements and works in concert with our Wonders Reading Program for English language arts. So that when our um, English learners are being supported with small group instruction, the instruction is cohesive and coherent. Um, they've received instruction in Wonders Reading, and then they move to more of a language lens where they might be working um, in a focused targeted area on um, speaking, listening, reading, or writing. So I think that has made um, a huge um, step in teachers being able to see how their student access curriculum all day long. We've worked really hard in our our departments to be very, very collaborative. Uh, I work with the equity department. Um, I work in teaching and learning. We house many different departments and we have brought in all of our instructional coaches in um, math, science, social studies, and English language development to work together in supporting students throughout the day. Um, a focus that we had over the past couple of years has really been increasing academic language skills. We know that if students don't understand the language of the specific content, it's very, very difficult for them to access. So that's been one um, focus for us is collaboratively working together across the school day. Another focus at the district level has been data. Um, we use multiple sources of data when we're making decisions for all students and in particular our English language learners. Um, we use our WIDA data profiles, we use RISE, we use a cadence, we use RI, um, and we use the of course the assessments that teachers develop, um, the common formative assessments that they're developing at their own grade levels to help make decisions about what does a student um, learning English really need. Um, so those are some of the ways. In the WIDA profiles, we've also been sharing with students, and I believe this has made an incredible impact, and setting goals with them. So we're kind of 
making all of this data demystified for them and sharing where they really have some strengths and where they have some areas that they need to to grow. And we're really focusing on the elementary school um, because we want to make sure that our students, when they leave elementary and enter secondary, they have a firm grasp of English that will make it possible for them to access the content area. Um, we know that if they do not have that, they don't have the opportunities for electives that then sometimes help, uh, well, I shouldn't say help, but sometimes then that, that motivation can go down and we see a real flattening um, in WIDA scores of our sec secondary students. So those are just a couple of the things that we have highlighted in the last couple of years. But as I said at the beginning, it's the work that's done at the school level by the individual teachers with students. So I'd like to turn the remaining time we have over to um, Heather Newell, who is an incredible administrator at pulling people together to make decisions that will really benefit students. Um, she doesn't shy away from controversy, but she supports her teachers in such an incredible way uh, that I'm just really, really proud to say that Heather is one of my my really close colleagues. So um, Heather, take it away with what you're doing at Backman to make this a reality for so many students. And again, thank you very much for the time. I appreciate it. Yes, thank you. Um, and thank you for this award. It really means a lot to us, especially in a time that's really hard and also a time that we don't have a lot of data. And we were lucky enough to get we the data before dismissal because it was in February. So it's kind of the only piece of valid data that we have right now. And um, so that's been really great um, to kind of help move us forward. So, and I just want to say this is truly a partnership. Um, it's between the district, between schools, teachers, families, and kids. So um, I kind of want to lay it out starting from the student level and, and build up. So the first thing we did was start to talk to kids about what WIDA is. Like we have all kinds of assessments. Assessment. We do interims, we have our end of level assessments, we have Acadians um, and many, many more. And so it just, for a long time, it just kind of felt like WIDA was another one of those tests that we had to endure. And we started to shift that. Like kids need to know why they're taking this test. They need to know what it means. They need to be empowered to do well. They need to know how to use the tools. They need to, we, we wanted to teach them to use the tools so that when they got to the test, they didn't. The, the assessment wasn't on whether or not they could navigate the platform, but it was actually testing their reading, writing, speaking, and listening. So it was kind of breaking down those barriers and teaching kids how to test and also how important the test is. And that, especially for our older kids, if, if they don't get out by the end of middle school, uh, or at the end of elementary school, middle and high school are a lot harder. And data suggests that um, but the students who, who don't have access um, or, or are still English learners, and um, if they don't have that by the time they get to secondary, they have a smaller chance of accessing higher education. So it's this, I guess, kind of creating that sense of urgency. So then we move to teachers and that sense of urgency, um, and really building their skills, professional development, looking at the data, um, making sure that they know um, how to read the data and how to use that, and then using the WIDA can do standards to set goals and inform their instruction. So a lot of capacity building using our um, coaches from the literacy department and um, also from the we, we have ELD coaches as well that have been helpful. Um, and, and giving teachers the ownership to be able to figure it out too. So we had, um, we've had two different curriculums. Um, we had EL Achieve and now Wonders ELD, but also teachers like allowing them to understand what their kids need and um, being able to explore that and um, meet the needs of their kids in those really unique ways. Um, so we've, we talk about them in our professional learning communities. We have faculty meetings. We have um, uh, a lot of professional development around that. We also have, for the past 
correct me if I'm wrong, Peggy, I think it's been about 15 years we've been doing um, English language development blocks for 45 minutes each day where kids are, has it been 15 years? It's been a long time. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so 45 minutes a day, they're in, um, up until last year, they were in their, um, leveled by their WIDA assessment scores. Um, and that, I think, made it an important thing. And we made that important because I think for a long time it was like, oh, yeah, we have to do this ELD block. But when we started to focus on it and make it meaningful and allow for that time for teachers and students to prepare for the assessment um, and teachers started to understand the importance of that, we really started to take off. So we do um, seven to eight week plans. We do a countdown to, to WIDA um, so that we're making sure that we're building those skills um, leading up to the assessment. Um, and then from the district level, um, and also I have to say that this largely has to do with my assistant principal who is now the principal at uh, Lo um, Creighton Middle School. Um, he, when he came, we were here three years together and he was like, we're going to, we're going to nail Rita. And I was like, let's do it. And so I, I think, um, his energy came in and he largely led this. So watch out for Clayton middle school because they're doing great things with their English learners. Um, and so then just working with our district level and that back and forth, like Peggy and I have worked a lot together and trying to figure out how to do this better. Um, and tapping into the resources that they provide, but also that like this is important um, and really might be the most important assessments our English learners take um, because we really need to make sure that we're building their skills because if they're not accessing the language, then they're not accessing the content. Um, so that feels like the most important piece. Um, so thank you for for all of the support that we've received. Um, and Christelle has certainly been a great resource for us as well and helping us figure this out and giving us great support. So I'm happy to take questions if there's anything else. And uh, Vice Chair Cummins, that concludes um, the presentation portion. So yes, if there are any questions for Peggy or Heather or Christelle, I will pass it back to you and the board. Thank you very much for your presentation and for your work. Any questions from board members? I don't see any hands, but I want to share my, my gratitude. Thank you very much for the work you're doing and the focus that you're putting uh, to this work. So thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay.